Hello, and welcome to Scrum Study. In the last video, we saw the fifth principle governing the Scrum methodology, time boxing. This session will introduce you to the sixth Scrum principle, which is iterative development. So let's get started. What does iteration mean? Well, an iteration is the repeating of a process with the aim of approaching the desired goal, target, or result. Each repetition of the process is also called an iteration, and the result of one iteration are used as a starting point for the next iteration. Going by this, the Scrum framework is driven by the goal of delivering maximum business value in a minimum time span. To achieve this practically, Scrum supports the iterative development of deliverables. In most complex projects, the customer may not be able to define very concrete requirements or is not confident of how the end product may look. This is where the iterative model comes to the rescue. It's more flexible in ensuring that any change requested by the customer can be included as part of the project. How is it done? Well, user stories may have to be written constantly throughout the duration of the project. In the initial stages of writing, most user stories are high-level functionalities. These user stories are known as epics. Epics are usually too large for teams to complete in a single sprint. Therefore, they're broken down into smaller user stories. Moving on, each complex aspect of the project is broken down through progressive elaboration during the groom prioritized product backlog process. The create user stories and the estimate, approve, and commit user stories processes are used to add new requirements to the prioritized product backlog. Next, the product owner pitches in. So let's look at what that role entails. The product owner's task is to ensure increased ROI by focusing on value and its continuous delivery with each sprint. The product owner should have a thorough understanding of the project's business justification and the value the project is supposed to deliver. As he or she drafts the prioritized product backlog and thereby decides what deliverables and values are delivered in each sprint. Then the create tasks, estimate tasks, and create sprint backlog processes produce the sprint backlog, which the team uses to create the deliverables. Moreover, in each sprint, the create deliverables process is used to deliver the sprint's outputs. Next, let's consider the Scrum Master's role. The Scrum Master has to ensure that the Scrum processes are followed. He or she facilitates the team to work in the most productive manner possible. Finally, the Scrum team self-organizes and aims to create the sprint deliverables from the user stories in the sprint backlog. In large projects, various cross-functional teams work in parallel across sprints delivering potentially shippable solutions at the end of each sprint. After the sprint is completed, the product owner accepts or rejects the deliverables based on the acceptance criteria in the demonstrate and validate sprint process. To clarify, here we have an illustration depicting how Scrum projects are completed in an iterative manner and how they deliver value throughout the life cycle of the project. So what's the benefit of applying this Scrum principle to the project? The benefit of iterative development is that it allows for course correction as all the people involved get better understanding of what needs to be delivered as part of the project and incorporates these learnings in an iterative manner. Thus, the time and effort required to reach the final endpoint is greatly reduced and the team produces deliverables that are better suited to the final business environment. And with that, we conclude yet another session on the Scrum Principles. I hope this session was informative and suggestive of the Scrum Principle Iterative Development. I look forward to seeing you in the next segment on another Scrum Principle. Thanks for watching.